so today we're going to talk about coffee. You can tell I'm tired because my voice is still not woken up. If you want to know where to get good coffee here, um, just continue watching. If you want to know how to use this coffee machine, just skip a few more minutes halfway through the video, I guess. If you find this useful, give it a thumbs up. If you want, you can even subscribe to this channel. So I am still in Las Palmas, or again, actually. I had a few more time to explore the coffee shops here, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about them. But a little disclaimer, I'm, I'm quite known with my friends, I think, that I bother them with my coffee talk. So every time I see someone have coffee in the afternoon, I give them a coffee talk. So, about the coffee. If this is boring you, again, like, skip a few more minutes, it's fine. But I think it's useful information, otherwise I wouldn't put this in here. I'm one of the people that could have coffee at 10pm and still sleep. So it's not about being able to sleep, but it's also the type of sleep you're getting. And basically you have like three types of sleep, so you have light sleep, deep sleep and REM sleep, which stands for rapid eye mo movement. Yeah, so you have the three sleep types, and usually people think like, oh, light sleep is bad, but it also has its purpose, because that's actually when your muscles recover, so if you had like, um, I don't know, ran a marathon, then you would have more light sleep than deep sleep, things like that. Any sleep is good sleep, but REM sleep is very important. They found like new machines, new technology, where they could um, film what's going on in your brain while you sleep. And they realized that while you're sleeping in REM sleep, um, it's also like when you dream and you know, like when your brain is basically sorting out what memory to keep and what to get rid of. They linked bad sleeping habits or like poor sleep, not a lack of sleep, with Alzheimer's. And um, I'm quite keen to like when I meet people in the future, maybe we're 50, 60, 80, whatever, um, who knows with what's going on in the world at the moment, that we remember each other. Because yes, Alzheimer's is like worse for the people around the person that is affected than it is for the person themselves because they don't actually realize what's going on, I guess. But they also lose some personality because your memories make you. Basically, long story short, caffeine stops your brain receptors or something to get into REM sleep, which means you have lower quality sleep. So yeah, just don't have too much coffee. I also put in the notes where I learned that so I was listening to this podcast. I feel like I'm having a battle with the birds here. It sounds really lovely, but come on, let me record this. Basically, too much coffee, you don't get into REM sleep. Alcohol does that too, so there's a lot of things that aren't great, um, but we all know that those aren't great for ourselves. And it's more likely to get Alzheimer's. Yes, there's also, of course, like genetical um, things that influence it and others, but lifestyle is a big one and what we consume is part of our lifestyle, so just be aware of that. Um, I try to not drink coffee past 12. I mean, every now and then I do, so I'm not going to kill myself for drinking coffee. Um, I stopped drinking espresso martini because yeah, I usually have them late. So if anyone wants to go on a coffee brunch and have espresso martinis in the morning, let me know. Yeah, so that's pretty much the information. Usually people react like, oh, why did you tell me that? And I didn't want to know this. I mean, it's like, well, now you have the knowledge. Now you can do with that knowledge what you want to do. Hate the message, not the sender. So please don't be mean. It's useful to know because the sooner we know this and the sooner we reduce our coffee intake, the better it will be to avoid Alzheimer's, I think, I guess, I hope. So drink responsibly coffee. Yeah, that's, that's the disclaimer. So let's continue. I struggle a little bit to find good coffee here. I feel like the coffee shops that are nice to work from don't tend to have good coffee. Then the ones that are having good coffee, it's not really a good place to work from. Someone on the Slack channel actually made a whole Excel spreadsheet of coffee shops, so I'm gonna link that in the comments. And if you don't know about the Slack channel, so in Las Palmas, they have this great Slack channel, which is so useful because everyone writes about everything, asks questions, so if you wonder where to get a yoga mat, where to go bouldering, whatever, someone has probably already asked a question. It's a very good resource to find out more about the island, or get to know people, or um, organize your own meetup. The ones that I really enjoyed are um, Unuka. I mean, it's not the best coffee. I actually found it like super milky. It's not really strong. Uh, it's not hot. If you want something else other than coffee, the chai latte is basically just milk with cinnamon. The matcha latte is is 
it's all right but it did don't mix it well i feel like yeah it's not great yeah the coffee it didn't taste bad but it wasn't great but it's a good place to work from but basically when i was there i think nine out of ten tables were other nomads or at least i don't know if they were nomads but people were from the laptops and um there was maybe like one family in the afternoon but it was like very quiet so um nice nice place to work from good work atmosphere um, they have plugs basically on every table so yeah really recommend it if you want to have a day out of your co-living or hostel or wherever you might be staying it's a, it's a good place i recommend that even though the coffee isn't the greatest if you do want good coffee i would suggest to go to old town to a place called cool beans they have very very good coffee um, and it even goes to a place where like the lady asks you like, if you want more acidic coffee or things like that and yeah so cool beans is quite nice i think like the cups are really nice to look at they're not that practical to drink from sometimes because they're a little bit crooked and if you kind of start from the wrong side it's a bit um you feel like you spill but it tastes good and they also like make the effort with the foam and the decoration and stuff i walked past a few cafe reginas they are recommended in a lot of blogs when I did my research before coming here. I never actually went to one to work from there because it was always really busy, very noisy. So we feel free to try it out. Maybe it was just there during the wrong time of the day. I think that there's enough videos about Café Regina where you see some work from there. So maybe check those out. But I haven't been there. I've been to Luvak. It's really nice for brunching. I worked there a few times. It's okay. It's not bad. I do prefer Unuga, but they're right next to each other, so maybe if you don't find a spot in one, you can try and check out the other. Well, not right next to each other, but like a minute away from each other. Someone told me there is um, a type of coffee that is quite popular here. I don't know if it's from the area, if it's a Spanish thing. The person who told me about it was another woman that lived in Madrid and Barcelona, so I don't know if she just fancied that coffee. I don't know if it's from here, but it's called um, Baraquita coffee, and it was quite nice. Yeah, so maybe, maybe try that. Now I'm going to show you how to use the coffee machine. So I am in the We People um, co-living. It's one of the new ones, it's called the Founder, so you can tell it's like it doesn't have the nice atmosphere yet, like some of the other co-livings, because it's quite bare. And I don't know if it comes across in the video, but it's a little bit echoey. But also my voice is really bad, so I bring my coffee to sort myself out. Yeah, so I'm gonna show you how to use this machine. So, yeah, let's start. First, you put some water into the thing at the top. Um, this bit. It looks like, because uh, usually in coffee machines you see why you put the water, because they have like, it's some clear plastic or glass thing, and you can kind of know how much there actually is already in it. But in this one you just guess, because you can't really see how much coffee there is, uh, sorry, how much water there is. I'll pour it in and hope you don't overspill, but you would see if you overspill. Um, so yeah, let me do that. Yeah, don't do this. I just spilled. And now we turn it on. I usually put it on pause um, before just so that um, it heats up. And in the meantime, I prepare the other stuff. I tried to find some foaming plant milk. Um, I struggled quite a bit. I think I tried like four or five because Usually I use the Oatly Barista, but I couldn't find that one here. And it turned out the one that is actually foaming is the cheapest one from the Hippodino, which is only like 99p or 99 cents. I remember asking around if people know where to find foaming plants-based milk. Then I got mansplained about like how it's not foaming because it doesn't have enough fat content and whatever. It's like, I know that, that's why I'm asking because I know that some are not foaming because of that. Anyway, I found one, and it's this one. So, the coffee I'm using is from this really, really nice coffee shop called Cafetier. So they only sell beans, you don't get takeaway coffee there or something. I asked like, again in the Slack channel if anyone can recommend a place where you can just buy the beans. And one person recommended that, I checked it out on Google, it looked quite nice and looked like an independent small business, which is what you should support. Yeah, I, I went there, the lady there was really, really nice. Oh, what is this doing? Whoa. Okay, don't do this. Make sure you have it screwed up properly. What a fail. I'll have to think later, I'm gonna cut this out. This never happened to me before. But yeah, I have this ready because I feel like the coffee machine can be like 
quite messy sometimes, especially when you don't have like a proper thing for a note form. This is why I'm making this video, because like, I had so many wins and losses with this thing. Um, so it's good that you also see what can go wrong. So, just gonna, good, it's tight. So, um, yeah, cool, um, where were we? So, coffee beans. So I went to this place called uh, Cafetier. And the lady was actually quite um, helpful because she was like, oh, what kind of coffee do you like? More acidic or... Um, I don't even remember what she asked me. I'm not that much of a connoisseur. One of my friends, she is a very caffeine connoisseur and she has like so much gear at home to make coffee. And I stayed with her recently and she makes the, like, the nicest coffee. Beth, if you're watching this, I'm talking about you. So I think Beth would enjoy going to a coffee shop where someone asks you like, oh, what, what do you like, what do you dislike? And she then um, shakes the chow with the coffee beans in it and, and lets you smell it because you can't really taste it. Yeah, so I went with her recommendations. So I got two. One coffee is almost gone. It's this. So let's see if I can get another coffee out of this. Um, I'm not quite sure I can. But I'm going to show you the other one. So this is what it looks like. Yeah, maybe I just use this for now because I don't think this will fill up another mug. And they can already smell it. Um, yeah, so let's let me put this back on. Hopefully there's enough water in there now. So what we do while this is heating up, we put some coffee in here. So I'm gonna take some of this coffee. Might be a little bit messy. We put it into this thing here. And it also has markers in there. I don't know if it's if, if it's like for two or four four coffee espressos. Um, I don't usually like espresso, like can't, I kind of mix it with hot water a little bit if it's too strong. Um, or like I drink it with milk anyway. Um, yeah, and then we kind of like put this in, so this is why this tool has like this thing. So it looks something like this. And then put this back, and then oh, it's making noise again. But maybe it's fine. So and then I put this in here where it says insert, and turn it to the other side. And then you put this thing down here, and then hopefully it would go. So you turn it to this setting. Here you go. Coffee's running. Let's pause this for now. It will still drip a little bit as we go because I want some um, from the hot water left um, to make the milk foam. I don't have a proper milk foam thing. Usually you find something that looks similar like this, but it's usually metal, but, but there's no tool for that. So what I'm using is like one of the marks they have. They don't have like Great marks, they're like small sized, so maybe be careful, try not to burn yourself. Yeah, so I'm gonna fill this with milk. And there's not that much left, so. And then I stick this out a little bit to the side. Someone showed me like if you try to make like a whirl out of it, and then wait for the bottom of, like in this case, the glass. So again, be a bit more careful. Uh, but it's thick glass, so hopefully it won't break. But don't do this at home, or like, I don't know, don't, don't blame me if it doesn't work out okay, I'm doing my best here to try to explain you this machine. Yeah, so basically you, you hold it, kind of tilt it. Again, I'm not a, a coffee connoisseur, I don't know if this is right. If you have corrections, feel free to put it in the comment if I'm doing something wrong and your coffee house is like, what the fuck is she doing? Um, put it in the comments so I can learn for next time. So you basically wait until there's like a little whirl and that the bottom of the cup is like semi warm, And then that should be the milk foam. I guess that's good enough for um, Yeah, this machine makes a lot of mess. Yeah, and then we pour the coffee and we drink it. And that's pretty much it. That was a bit of a mess. The machine is still making funky noises. All right, thank you guys for joining me this morning. I'm going to try next time to be a bit more awake. Hopefully this helps. Thank you for watching. And um, yeah, let's, let's see you next time. I don't know how George Clooney makes this look so not awkward, but I'll try it. Bye!
Okay, guys, I just came back from yoga and I went by this, um, you know, bakery thing. But I had still the camera set up here, so I thought, oh, it might be worth to add to the coffee video. So one thing that you can enjoy with your coffee here are like these massive croissants. They're like one year fifty, which might sound, depending where you're from, a lot for a croissant. But it is like the size of my head. Like, look at this. Um, and they're really, really good. When you see the queue, um, go past it, pick a number, and then you'll see at the counter which number they're at, and then you just go. It's worth the wait. Sometimes you can wait up to like 20 minutes, but if you go like early afternoon, like 2, 3 p.m. or 4 p.m., um, it's not that busy, but if you go on a weekend in the morning, it's usually a big queue. Either way, it's definitely worth going. So I'm gonna enjoy this, but maybe another coffee. And, um, yeah, it's, it's past 12, which is like past my coffee rules, so maybe not another coffee, but yeah. Go check out the place, they have nice bread as well, and 